Congressman-elect George Santos is facing a slew of accusation this week, uh, alleging that he fabricated large segments of his resume and misled voters about his faith and family. During his campaign, Santos claimed to have graduated from Baruch College and NYU. Neither institution, however, has found any records of him attending. Santos has also been called out by the Jewish community for falsely claiming to be a part of that faith. The 34-year-old has since admitted to lying about his heritage, education, and past jobs while campaigning. Santos is now facing potential investigations by the House Ethics Committee and the Nassau County District Attorney's Office. With us now, Jeffrey Lord served as an advisor in the Reagan White House and is a contributing editor for The American Spectator. Mark Rudolph is a branding advisor and a Newsmax columnist. Great to have you both, and thanks for coming on today. Jeff, let me start with you. Uh, how bad is this for George Santos as an individual, as a future congressman, and then overall for the GOP party? Well, I think it's bad for him eventually here. I, I don't think he's going to be out of there before they before January 3rd when they have to vote for speaker. I think he will be president and accounted for. But one of the interesting things I think about this, and my, and my, my colleague Scott McKay at the American Spectator has written about it this morning, is what this says about the media in this sense. He told the right woke lies, if you will, and so nobody bothered to check him. Uh, just like Elizabeth Warren, it tells the woke uh, business about her identity, she's still there. Uh, Joe Biden, on and on and on, you can go with this list. What does it say that if you say the right kind of lies, no one's gonna bother to check you? If on the other hand, he'd said, well, he was a, he was a right-wing fundamentalist. He belonged to Jerry Falwell's old church or what have you. You can bet they would have pounced on him. Uh, I just find it curious as to how this is being handled. Mark, how much does Republicans' slim majority when they take control of the House on Tuesday play into the amount of pressure Santos is going to feel for stepping down? I mean, they have a very slim majority. They really need every vote. Yeah, but I don't know what kind of a vote it is. See, I don't think this is really about George Santos, and that's a good point. It's not about George Santos per se. George Santos, as you said, lied about his ancestry, his career, his education. But I don't care. He's the latest liar on the stage. He's a young version of Joe Biden. The thing is, is that he has an R after his name. If he were to have a D after his name, nobody would care because lying is the new black. And so... When you think about uh, what he represents, it's the deterioration of America, where lying has become the new norm, as I said. In, uh, on Twitter, pre-Elon Musk, if you told the truth, you got penalized. So right. Americans have been conditioned to not only shut their mouths, but to accept lies. And if you want to look at the root of the problem, and I blame Republicans for allowing this to happen, but if you want to solve any problem, you have to go to the root of it. And the root of this problem is in the schools, from K through graduate school. These kids are taught lies all day long. Girls are boys, boys are girls. And become, because America has become more secular over time, it's become more immoral. You have parents taking their kids to drag queen story hours, and they're mutilating children. So, so what is acceptable today uh, was not acceptable in the past. In 1987, Joe Biden was running for president again, and he stole Neil Kinnock's speech, and then it was discovered, and he was criticized for that, and that derailed his speech. And Johnny Carson, on his monologue on The Tonight Show, even mocked Joe Biden for it. Today, nobody would care. Again, if Santos were a Democrat, this wouldn't even be news. Hmm. Um, I guess we don't even know where he went to school, uh, really, to your point about blaming the schools. Um, look, Jeff, you know, when it comes to earning America's trust, right, Americans trust, they want to be able to to understand that the politician who says they went to the school actually did, that they have work experience working at a company that they actually worked there. What does this mean for Republicans going forward in selecting really ideal and honorable people to represent Americans? Well, it, it, it means that they need to really investigate people who are going to, who are asking them for their vote, to check up on them, to check up on their background and resume. I mean, we have all been around people running for office. 
and they say, I stand for X, or I went to school here or there. You need to check on this. The media needs to check on this. Don't just give them a pass and let them go, or you will get into this kind of situation that we've seen. And you know, Mark mentioned Joe Biden in 1987. I played a role in that. I was a big Bobby Kennedy fan when I was a kid, memorized all his speeches. In 1987, I was in the Reagan political office, heard him deliver a speech on C-SPAN, and I was getting to the end of his speeches, his sentences before he was. So I picked up the phone, called the New York Times. Maureen Dowd was the reporter there at the time. Two days later, they ran a front page story. They quoted me. Uh, a, a few days after that, he was out of the race. There were other incidents started to come to light. So you've got to be willing to, to speak up when you know something like this and say it and do something about it. Mark, uh, heavy, these are some pretty heavy accusations being levied against Mr. Santos. Uh, he claimed his mother died uh, from 9-11. There's some questions whether she didn't die in 9-11 on 2001, uh, but maybe years later from cancer stemming from uh, working near in the buildings, uh, even accusations that he lied about as being Jewish. Uh, can he politically survive this? Will he remain a member of Congress next week? Well, that's the thing. And as I said before, Mike, if you look at the Democrats, they win everything by lying, cheating, stealing, rigging, and censoring. Americans are now used to it. They've become so malleable that they accept lying. I've gone to a couple of people to say that I'm going to do this story. And the reaction was interesting. Does anybody really care anymore? And that's what is so sad. Mm. And once again, I blame Republicans for this. And that's why if the Republicans don't get their act together for 2024, this country is lost. Mm. All right. Uh, we're going to wait and see. Again, this is potentially a challenge for Kevin McCarthy as he's trying to win his own speakership at this point and secure the votes. Again, a very slim majority. So he would want all Republicans present and accounted for to cast that ballot. Uh, Mark Rudolph, thanks for weighing in. I appreciate your brand analysis.